Salt Lake City Crusaders. My name is Grant. I'm O2. And I'm John Tucker. We're here with one of our new teammates uh, to help him pat his helmet. Now before we get started, um, we are not experts at patting helmets. Let's just say that. But this is one of the ways that we, uh, I personally, have done to pat our helmets for armored combat. So if you're new, I would absolutely recommend that you go contact your organization or some of the veteran fighters to get their help and input in doing that. And this is just one of the ways that um, I have used and it has functioned fairly well for me. This uh, helmet right here is the one we will be padding today. As far as the structure of a, of a helmet goes, there are essentially three parts that are necessary for um, protecting your head. So we have the, the actual steel itself to block or stop the, the weapon of the attack. And then you have a level of padding, a concussion padding, um, to help distribute and the force of the blow itself. And then we have a comfort liner of some kind. And this is a just a uh, simple coif that we will use underneath to help absorb some of the sweat and provide a level of comfort for the fighter in his helmet. So um, to start, we will need to address some of the things inside. So one of the prep work we did was help just clean out the, uh, the surface of the inside of this helmet because we will be using carpet tape to actually hold in, um, use as adhesive for the padding. The reason why I use carpet tape is because one, it is adhesive enough to keep the padding in place um, amidst the fighting or the maintenance of the helmet and the um, like the blows and everything, the putting on uh, uh, and taking off of the helmet. But then it is not so adhesive that it can't be removed. Because there are times when you will need to remove your helmet, especially if you have to get in to do some repairs or say do some rivets to the chin straps or the retention strap of the helmet. And so it's easy enough to remove and then you can apply some new adhesive when you go to reattach the concussion liner. So before we do anything, this helmet is lacking what we call a retention strap. And so it is the strap that connects the helmet and usually attaches to the body plate. That will m ensure that the helmet cannot or will not be removed amidst all of the fighting and chaos. We will start doing that right now. Okay, so now we will be doing the retention strap, attaching it to the back of the helmet. We've already pre-drilled a hole into the back of the helmet. So we'll be using a leather strap a nail for the rivet with a washer, a ball peen hammer, some dikes, and a leather hole punch. So first, we want to make the hole. We've already made the hole, but and then place the nail through the leather. And now we will be measuring and cutting the nail. So when you cut the nail for the rivet, you want to leave a little bit of extra space. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So now that we've cut our rivet, I'm going to place it through the helmet, put our leather strap on it, put the washer over it, set it on the anvil. Now with the ball peen hammer, you want to use this rounded side. Because what we're going to do is we're going to mushroom out this part of the nail.
Now when you do this, you want to hit around the edges of the actual nail so it spreads the actual metal of the nail. Then once you have it wide enough, you can then flip it over and use this flat part of the hammer to flatten it out because you do not want anything to hit you in the back of the head. And now your retention strap is attached. All right, so here we are. We uh, have the retention strap inside and we're about to put in some layers of padding. So what I didn't mention earlier is that if you couldn't tell, this is not a historical method of padding a helmet. We are using concussion padding and this stuff is modern. So we're not using horsehair, we're not using a suspended system. Um, it is not as important to maintain the historical inside of the helmet we are going with safety over historical accuracy. I just wanted to get that out of the way first. So if you're complaining that it's not historical, we like to preserve our heads. So <laughs> one of the things that we'll start with is that the nature of this helmet, you can tell it's very pointed and his head is not going to be all the way up in there. So we are going to fill to at least the padding of the top to make sure that the eye holes are lined up properly with our fighter's eyes here. So we will be using, as we stated earlier, some level of carpet tape with the concussion padding to put that in there. And by the way, carpet tape is terrible to deal with, but it is useful. So we have a couple pre-cut strips right here. Actually, what am I doing? I'm gonna put it on. So first strip in. I'll be placing this one right at the very inside point of this helmet. And then these two will go on either side of that. Yeah, we're going to need to cut more carpet tape. Because mm -hmm. I would personally prefer. I like to cover the whole thing. Okay. So, be careful. Safety first. <laughs> yeah, this, this process will actually take quite a while. And so... It's better to just take your time and uh, make sure it fits right and it's all, it's all in there. Because the last thing you want to do is actually just rush it and have a terrible job. Next thing you know, it's falling apart, it's coming undone, you're missing pieces, it's not sitting right, or it adjusts mid-fight and that, you don't want any of that. So if you have to spend a little bit more time to make sure it fits right and it's fitting to your head, then by all means take the extra time to do that. The first time I did my helmet, I spent quite amount of time to get it right. And I had to learn kind of along the way of what fit, fit well, how to work the carpet tape, you know, some of the best methods. And I used scissors the first time and I got, I can't use the scissors anymore. So we will take this Put it inside, like so. It's a little dark in there, so if you can't see, put it right on top. I'm then placing on one side the larger piece, and I'll be placing the other one on the other side. So the whole point of this is to actually fill in that top space and allow you some um, vertical compression in your padding so when you do take a vertical strike to the head it has some some cushion and some give and it fills in the extra little bit of space leading to that point at the top of his head
bring this piece in. And as you can currently see, I have a little space sectioned off on the top. What you can also use for to substitute for that would be, like I have in my helmet, is the round top portion of the army or military ACH padding. So I do use that in conjunction with the concussion padding that we have here um, to allow for the fitment. So you can also use that round piece that you, you might notice in those military helmets as the topmost portion to serve the same function of what I just put in. So I brought this, it's from a baseball helmet I got. It has some padding, it has some similar foam to the concussion padding we have here. Would this be usable or advisable or would you still prefer to use the other concussion padding? So I would definitely say you could use it. So if you notice the construction of this, it does have a much harder um, concussion padding along here with some foam liner. Now, one of the reasons why I would not use this is because of this foam liner right here. And that reason is for, one, it is very thick. Your coif actually serves the function of a comfort liner, whereas you don't have a coif in a standard um, baseball helmet or whatnot. And so the, the, the amount of moisture that this can grab onto or the, the amount of space that it would take on the inside of the helmet, uh, I would say you could use it, but personally I would not. You just have more protection with the concussion padding than you would with this. I would just say that for the amount of space that you have inside your helmet, I would go with the other system. But this is definitely an option. And there are other things that you can use to substitute or supplement concussion padding. Um, and this is obviously one of them. So today we will not be using this. But it is an option. What we are going to be putting in next are the liners. Um, at least the first layer of liner around some of the um, hot spots of the head. And those hot spots are right along the fore, uh, the eyebrow, along just above the eyebrow, along the forehead, along the temple, and then again we're going to be putting another vertical strip over the head and then some along the occipital point. And once we kind of have that, um, we can we can give us more or less needed depending on the, the fit of the helmet. So uh, once we have those, at least the first layer of those in, then we can start putting it on, engaging um, where we need more padding and how much space we have in the fit of the helmet. So I have a piece right here. I'll be putting first along the eyebrow of, of the helmet. So we will need some tape for that. If you'd like to put it on, just on that side. So I'll be putting this layer in along and keep it even and I will be stopping just prior to the ears because we want to leave some space for the ears to squish in because if you've ever, like if I pat it evenly across you will find that your ears get a little bit squished and it may not be the most comfortable. You can see that will be running along there, and I'm keeping it um, just off of where about the ears will go. We will put more layers in here, but this is our first starting layer. I will usually run about two, one, at the very minimum one, but preferably two layers, um, depending on how much extra space there is in this helmet. All right, so now that we have that brow line in, we'll be putting in the strip that goes just along vertical portions of the head. We have one already cut out. And now if you accidentally touch something else with these, it's gonna, it might ruin, ruin it. You'll have to reapply <laughs> your carpet tape or get it, you know, kind of other situated. So I would be very careful with it because when you start having to rip off carpet tape, it's not fun. It's very sticky. Not fun at all. So as you can see, I'm running that 
right along all the way down to the base. And it's okay to cover that up. The reason why we use carpet tape is so that, let's say you rip this rivet out, you can peel it back. It won't be as fun or, as a butt or, or anything, but you can actually peel it back and then replace this. And so I will, pro will probably not put too much just over this portion, but carpet tape allows for you to actually go in and replace it. Now, to get the top, the eyebrow layer, this is where we're going to actually start putting the helmet on to see how much space we have. Sweet. So if you'd put on your little coif, your comfort liner, and there are a variety in these. Um, this isn't as important, so you don't need like the highest quality um, coif. It, like we said, is a comfort liner, so whatever coif is most comfortable. A good quality padded coif will help in the distribution and padding, especially the noise. Um, but if you have a cheaper um, coif, or say you, you're using cotton, you know, some cotton or uh, whatever, but if you want some super fancy linen and wool one with, you know, extra padding in there, by all means, but as long as you have the space and it fits in your helmet, that's fine. So, start putting that on. So this, we still need some space because as we can see, if you can see, um, his nose is, the eyebrows are sitting, the top of the uh, eye slot is sitting right about his nose. Yeah. So we do need to raise it up um, there we go. Yeah. roughly um, another right about there, right? That's inch, what inch or I'd inch say and a half. Right about there, yes. So when it comes to your eye level, it is personal preference. I actually prefer to keep my eyes slightly above. So when I'm standing, completely upright, my eye slots will actually be just at the top of my eyelids and my eyebrows. And the reason being is when I do fight, I am leaned over and I, have I tuck my chin a little bit and then I'm looking upwards with my eyes. And so if I were to have it straight directly level with my eyes while I'm standing upright, the moment I lean down, I lose my entire top vision. And so wherever you are in your fighting stance, you want to align the eye slots with where you stand. So if you were to stand up, into a fighting stance and look through your eyebrows or your eye slots, that's where you want your uh, helmet to be. But we still have some space regardless. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna cut out some more and we're gonna put in another layer. There. To add some height. One of the reasons why, so we're actually cutting our strips in the length that they are because we're trying to match the width of the carpet tape strips. And so we don't have some weird overlap layer because <clears throat> you want to cover the majority of the surface area with carpet tape. And if you have a really wide strip, you either have to have a lot of uncovered um, area of the concussion padding, or you have to go with the second strip of tape. And if it's not, uh, if it's two strips, I personally find that a little too wide and then you have some weird overlap. And so just to make it simple, I usually cut it around the, the width of a strip of the carpet tape. That's By the way, I put in the uh, second Mohawk strip. Yeah. Now, I'll be putting in yeah. some of the um, temple to occipital portions of the, of the padding. So, if you can tell, I'll be running this. I'm gonna measure it with this. I'm sorry, I'm Roughly. <laughs> So I'll be putting this in. <laughs> no, so I won't actually be putting it in directly. So I'll be running it slightly at an angle um, from the temple down to help cover some of the portions of the head. Because if you run it directly, you want to turn your head around. So I, the other portions run along the eyebrow right here. And I'll be running this at a slight angle because I want to cover this portion of the head because if I only run it along the top it'll cover on here and I will still cover that portion but what I'm doing is I'm running it slightly lower to help cover this this uh, point of the head that actually kind of sticks out from the rest of the head. We should probably also point out that that's a very vital part of your head and getting hit there can really mess with your brain so it's very good to cover that part of your head. So now that we have some extra padding in, we'll be once again putting on the helmet liner and testing the fit. You will do this as many times as 
necessary to get a good proper fit to your head. Many, many times. Many times. So as far as the eyes go, we are looking a lot better. Probably add maybe a little bit to the top because your eyes are barely kind of hanging over the opposite side. So if anything, you could raise it up just up, sorry, just a tad on the top. And as far as the sides go, um, there's still plenty of space in between. We can the we, sides. we can still run another line around around the sides, um, and then of course we will touch the uh, the cheek the jawline as well and the back of the head. But first we're going to finish up with this portion. So now that we know, we're going to add a little bit more to the areas. So uh, when we put in the jawline and stuff like that, that should help push it. Okay. The the padding along the jaw, which a lot of people don't actually put in. I'll always recommend um, putting in the jaw, because we said before, um, getting hit in the jawline or in the face is very common. Me, personally, I like to shield punch right in the face, and I can tell when someone has proper jaw padding or not when I hit them in the jaw. And it helps keep the helmet from jarring or rattling or moving around. Because um, if it is too loose, it can shift on your head and then limit your visibility, and then the helmet won't be fitting like it originally was. So you may feel a little bit uh, more discomfort when you take head hits if it shifts or adjusts on top of there. And so the jaw helps keep it in place and offers some padding along the facial areas and the lower parts of the helmet. Um, I like to use motorcycle helmets as a reference. I ride a lot of motorcycles, and so the fitment that a motorcycle helmet gives actually, is, I have found, works a little bit better um, as far as like the face and jaw areas go than some other systems that I've seen. And so I usually like to go with that and I think that it, it offers uh, more than ample protection uh, and fit for your, for your helmet. Okay. We'll put another, not a full length mohawk strip, but just one that um, will stretch out the length of Okay. Just, more just to give you a little bit on the top and then we will run another layer around the eyebrow um, and then another layer around the back so that should theoretically give you enough space if there is too much and it's too tight then we can start removing some where we need but that's where we're gonna go from here all right, so now we have finished putting in a lot of the inner portions. If you want to take a look, it's kind of what it looks like right now. Um, we are going to test out another um, fit on his head to see if it works. As you can see, um, I put in lots of, uh, we put in lots of little strips and just kind of placed them as needed. And we're gonna do another test. So put that thing on, see where we need to put more if we do. It feels snug. Still, maybe some space on the sides, but. If I stuck my finger in right there, how would that feel? It's a little close to your face. Probably put another strip just okay. right, right here, just on this side and that might hold it a little bit more in place when you take those vertical strikes. As yep. far as on top, how does it feel all along the crown, the brow, and, and the top of the head? So around the crown and the top areas, in my opinion, it feels good and snug. But just right here, I can still feel quite a bit of space. I can still feel pressure when it gets pushed, but there's still plenty now of space around the back. don't want area. to interfere with your gorget, because your gorget will come up as well. So okay. if we want to uh, grab, grab a gorget and just kind of throw that on to see if it will interfere. Because um, if we have it come down too far, it may. Put that on here. So for those of you new to the sport, this is a gorget. This is actually neck protection. Has these plates underneath so that he doesn't get the blows down there. Or in at his neck. <laughs> And that's what this is for. This is uh, there's a metal piece underneath here that stops the strikes from coming into his neck. I want to see, uh, see the height okay. of the gorget. How does it feel? Am I joking you? Nope, not joking me at all. Okay, it needs to go tight. <laughs> <laughs> More. 
Alright, so it does it does come right up to the bottom of the padding, so that is that is good right there. You will we could probably keep it about another inch above or another strip. Um, a few inches. Alright, so we're gonna cut in one more little strip and then test it again. Alright, so um, we have this fitted right now. Um, as best as we we will so as you can see we did fill in a little bit in the top we put in an extra portion just along the side to give him a little bit better along the jaw um, it does fit him as of right now of course you will always want to go out actually you know use your helmet practice make sure it's fitting or it's slipping around because after three or four fights you may realize that you um you kind of you want it to fit slightly differently and and notice here we do have these little um, buckle things for the chin strap the chin strap is not installed as of right now and so some of that wobble will disappear when you actually have a good tight fit on your chin so you will have to take that into account we will put that on uh, later um, so as as it stands this should be uh, good enough so if you wouldn't mind putting on the helmet, and we'll do a little test, a couple test hits. Of course. Alright. So, we have a couple tests. It will be a little loud, but... I'm ready. Didn't feel a thing. Nope. It's awesome. Alright, let's do one on the back. The back of the head bottom and the top yeah you all right I'm good okay see armor is working the padding is working and his head is protected and if you can see right here these were not just loud soft hits like these were actual hits so of course we will um, at a later date go out and actually practice and make sure that the helmet is fitting right with the chin strap installed of course and then uh, we can adjust from there if we need if it is fitting him and it's not slipping around changing or not then then we will be good but as of right now this is uh, good enough again I will say that we're not experts and we're not helmet padding professionals or medical professionals but this system that we just put in has worked for me and it's worked for several other fighters here and it has worked I have yet to get any head injuries and in the three years that I've been fighting and so this system has worked well enough for me. We will conclude and make sure to follow us if, again if you want any um, any of our other content, any of our other social media platforms and again here on this channel we'll have more YouTube videos to come. Yes please like and subscribe.